applications engineers, you're going to love this video. I'm at the Engineering Technology Group. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you uh, enjoy what you see. I'm with Steve Brown. We're going to be looking at an application you would normally consider to be done on a milling machine, but actually it's being done here on the Nakamura Tomy SC300. This isn't just about the machine, is it? I know we can wax lyrical and talk about how good this piece of kit is, which I'm sure everybody knows, Japanese-built Nakamura machines. Um, I would say they keep bringing out new technologies as well, but we'll, we will come on to that. This is about the story of what ETG have done for a customer to provide a solution that you wouldn't normally consider. Would that be right? And can you tell us what it is? Yeah, so completely right. So this is an applications um, uh, uh, product that we wanted to, to put forward. So naturally, we, we all sing about twin spindles, single turrets and everything. But I don't think, in your, even in your portfolio, you, you will have another video expressing what we're going to show you, what we're showing you today. Um, it's basically, it's ex extruded, extruded material. All right, walk us through it then. What, what is it? What are you doing? What have you done? Right, so on, the, on this particular application, um, if you imagine an extruded um, component, um, or profiled component. So the two different terms that, that, that people use. Um, so we've taken that component, um, we've offered it up into a bespoke bar feed supplied by Hydrofeed. Um, so obviously we have a nature of different um, profile components. So if we, if, if we pick this up, for example, that's the initial work holding that we've got there. And you can see this is the nature and the profile of the, of the component itself, which we're gonna bar feed through. Okay. So, so to start in with the bar feed, they would normally have liners to support the bar, I believe. What, what's different in there then? So basically we're loading through a rectangle and odd, odd portfolio of shape, you know. Um, so yeah, you're exactly like right. you'd have a set of rollers that goes into a bushing system. Then we'd load, load through bushes that are within the, within the spindle hours in itself. They've configured the bar feed so it has a conveyor system that we've got two grippers that pulls the bar material through then the push rod comes all the way through. And this support system here goes through the entire spindle. Then when we change over to a different profile of material, we change the work holding collet and we change the, 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 the through the bore um, work holding. Okay, so the trick to this is it's a part that may have been done um, or a quantity of parts that would have been done maybe using a milling machine, a vertical machine in center or some form of uh, prismatic machine type. But now you've flipped that completely and it's being yeah. done on a multi-axis turning center, yeah. how? Exactly, so this, this we can't show you the part because obviously it is, it's very, very sensitive, but it's an aerospace part, okay? Um, and it's a family of parts. So if we, if we just take that profile as an example, um, historically that would have been done on a, on a milling machine. Um, so we'd have had a three meter length of um, material. The customer would have chopped those up all into the relevant pieces. We'd have manually loaded these into a, a VMC and we'd have drilled, tapped and, um, and milled off the, the, front, the front faces, okay? So they're probably talking about five or six machines going through to automate. Yes, we can come in with a robot and load in and out of the machine and, and, and so forth. We looked at the whole cell and we're putting the same capacity through this one, this one machine. Change over time, you're probably talking two minutes to change over from one liner and the collet. So the flexibility that we've given them in one machine is going to take out another, another, another five cell arrangement. Okay, but critical to this is there's no real turning, is there? It's all milling. Correct, yeah. The only, the only turning element that we, we, we're doing um, is the spindle will be slowly rotating when we, when we come, to, come to part off. So again, from a pro, if you can picture a profiled um, component, we could have it 20 millimeters long for a small batch, which we can handle. We catch through the parts catcher, or we could have it as a, as a 1200 mil um, section, because we take that profile all the way through to the, to the sub spindle. Because for those longer parts, um, we keep double, double feeding. Um, we use the sub spindle with the same configuration of work holding to support while we're dragging the component, the component through. So I'm kind of look at thinking here about maybe an aero structure or something like that, that you could, that I've seen even on, in, on your Chiron machines being machined between centers. There's the capability here to be able to use these two spindles, one to, or oh, both to support really, and then, then the power of your turret here to, to actually do the milling. I mean, are we saying then that this milling is, is, is more than capable of handling all types of machining? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've done 
um, with the AS product that we have, we've put six of those machines into a milling environment where the spindle is literally acting as a, as a, as a fourth axis, you know. Um, so the, the arrangement that we've got on this machine is they're al aluminium extruded parts, okay. So we need that, uh, uh, that, that high RPM. We do have a steel configuration that's going through the cell as well, um, which means we need necessarily lower RPM but more torque. Um, so and you can do that too? Yes, yeah, particularly in this machine, that's what we've, we've got the advantages of, 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 of both. Yes, we won't have the 20,000 RPM spindle that we have um, like on the, the shear on or a dedicated five, five axis, um, but we've got the flexibility in this cell. So you can almost say um, what we're getting out of this cell compared to that um, milling environment and waiting for the hold up um, from the parts coming off the saw. And then you got whip, haven't you? That the parts are sitting there waiting to get to the to the machine. We have we have one job on this machine, and that's basically keep feeding that bar feed. Uh, what's the value to the customer? You talk about it replacing a different cell. Is there a quantifiable, you know, sixty percent better output, thirty percent better, or you know, savings of X, Y, or Z? What what could you actually say to put it down to? Well, footprint, footprint is key, isn't it? You know, so the, these businesses currently are winning more and more orders. Um, so if you can picture um, five milling machines in an area of a, of a factory, and we're going to replace it by this cell here, one has got more expansion for investment in other projects. Um, so you would obviously have overheads against that particular, that particular project. We've just got rid of all of those. Um, it has enabled him to requote the project and get it on a better price, in increasing his, his margins because he's got a dedicated machine that will now be running also out of hours. Um, it Power consumption from five machines compared to one? Exactly, yeah. So electric isn't cheap nowadays, is it? You know, So there's, there's lots of factors um, that basically when we just put the basics of the proposal back to the customer, you could see the penny starting to drop. How, uh, how important is it for other manufacturers watching this video and others that we, we shoot to actually try and reconsider how they're making their parts because there could be a more efficient way. And if they do think like that, how do they get hold of you, Steve? Or maybe not new, you, because it's probably your apps guys, is it? Yeah, it'll be our technical department, but it, it's a real game changer. You know, th 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 you sh any, anything that you're machining, you should really approach it. If you're looking to take cost out of the part, um, you should really approach us and just let us look at, at the part itself and let us give you our, our proposal and our, and our offerings. From what we have within our portfolio, whether it be Nakamura, Quasar or Chiron, you know, we have, a, we have the 50 gram machine, we have a 5 million pound machine. So the concept, we will have something um, that would help, help you, as a, you as a customer.